Watch this effect. This right here would usually cost tens of thousands of dollars. You have to ship it to a visual effects team somewhere in a different continent and the time zones would be flipped. You would miss deadlines. There might be a communication gap. I've lived through all of that. Now you can just do it all inside Resolve thanks to AI. And that's the thing, like we hate on AI so much because we are thinking that it's taking away our job. What we don't realize is that it is turning one person into a full-blown studio. And this is just one of the three killer effects that I'm gonna show you inside Resolve 20. And once you know these, you're gonna be dangerously good regardless of your skill set. So get pumped about that. And if you enjoy content like this, it will mean the world to me if you pause the video for a second, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you can be notified about my next video. Let's jump right in. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. All right, so let's start with our first shot and our first feature. So this one right here, okay? This is something that used to go to VFX and this was a whole thing and now it can all be done inside Resolve. And that's why we can't cry about what AI is taking away from us. We need to think about what AI is bringing to us. And let me just show you what I'm talking about. So the client says, hey, this um, doesn't need to be red because we're gonna have multiple variations of these ads and we just didn't have a, lo a lot of time or budget to shoot with different shoes. But one of the models that we have, it's gonna have this green right here. It's not gonna have this red, it's gonna have this green. So can you just create that version? So now we're saving on the actual production cost. We're saving on VFX department. Usually it would ship out to India. They're working in completely opposite time zone from US. And then it would just prolong the entire process. Now we just go, okay, let me see what I can do. So I go right here with our AI Magic Mask 2 with our latest update. So I am working off of the 20.2.3, okay? This came out two days ago. So I'm working with this now. Look at how robust it is, okay? All I do, just make sure that this legacy object mask is not checked on. All right, so all we have to do is just go in here, select Magic Mask 2, and click right here and click right here, or click right here. Now let's turn this on and see how good of a job it did. So it selected the entire shoe. We don't want that. So we can just select, subtract, and go click right here. And it's just so smart. It just knows everything and it's just gonna go ahead and do that. And at this point, I can just like run the entire thing. And then at the end, we can check it to make sure that everything looks good. And it will. It will hold up. Look at how fast the entire process is. I'm using uh, Mac Studio with M2 Ultra chip. I'm not even using M3 Ultra. So if I go back to this, look at this. If I go here, look at that. And now at this point, like look at how clean this is. At this point, I'm just gonna hit better. All right, so come out of it. Look at it, how good this is. Look at how good this is. Look at how good this is, okay? So we're basically set. So now we just come out of this. And at that point, all we have to do, like I said, is match this to that. And let's start with our hue. Keep it somewhere around here. Let's go in saturation, kill it, bring it up. Keep it somewhere around 21-ish. Let's just keep swinging that until we get something that's a pretty good match. We can do blur radius. Okay, this is not gonna work. Let's do denoise. Denoise is not going to help us either. How about if we just expand, grow our radius like a little bit? Okay. So that helps a lot. So now if I do before and after, just look at this. Park it here. Look at this. Park it here. Look at this. Okay, let's park it here. Look at this. So it basically just did the entire thing and we can go through it and we can see how good of a job it did. And just like that, I mean, are you kidding me? Like we, we just did this that easy. And this is a VFX like heavy job that they're gonna spend so much time on to create this and then send us mats and we have to plug that in and we need to know what we're doing on our end and then do the texture uh, um, application on top of it. Right now, my look was created using rapid grade. I mean, you can use whatever you want to create it. I mean, this is such a juicy look. Good luck, you know, trying to get this look with something else. We can go, we can completely change this look. We can go commercial white. 
and like we can get this look, but like this is like locked in already because this happened before our look generation. Okay, so what about classic Hollywood? Like it's such an extreme look. What about something crazy like Children of Men? Such an extreme look. And all of this just blends in now. Now, all of that is just going to blend in. Like, are you kidding me? Like, this is insane. Now, if we take these two and we do before and after, like what we created, um, you know, once again, let's go here. Let's pick like 90s vibe. Uh, let's do clean film. Like what a beautiful, warm look. Whatever we want to pick from here, right? Like, I mean, we can do uh, gentle salmon, which is a very, very light look on the entire thing. But like, you know, retro chrome is one of my favorite. And we ended up creating this absolutely gorgeous look. And most importantly, like what we did here. So now let's move on to our second example. All right, moving on with our second super, super hot feature. So we have this shot right here, which already looks beautiful thanks to rapid grade because this is before, this is after subtle difference, but so big at the same time. You can see the vector scope. You can see the waveform, like colorized waveform, how much we're pulling out of this and making it just so gorgeous. I mean, we can also like drive it into uh, that uh, gel gentle salmon or soft rose, actually. Soft rose is a really beautiful look as well. And it's really pretty, but let's just go back to something pushed um, and we can keep it like, let's just say this, right? Like, so we have commercial white or we can even do nightclub, which is even like, you know, really leaning into the blues and we can see it here. So now if I do before and after, it's like very, very juicy in that aspect. But now what we want to do is like we want to pull the highlights down because that's just a bit much, right? So, I mean, this is like my balance. And in here, I just want to control my highlights, just the background. I want to leave everything as is. And this tool just keeps getting more and more robust and uh, more optimized. So it works faster. And the idea, idea is very simple. And I want to give you some pro tips um, on using this as well. So we want to affect like anything that's white, that's going to be affected. Okay, so if I come out of this and if I just do this, um, you'll see like, you know, we're affecting like, uh, the areas that it was telling that, you know, hey, I'm grabbing this area, right? So what we want is we want to affect the opposite, you know, the, the backdrop so we can invert it. And now we're affecting the background, but we're still affecting quite a bit of like front, you know, which we don't want like the foreground. So I'm just going to open all of these up and kind of show you what's going on. The only ones that I am concerned with is this guy and this guy. Okay. And then once we do that, nothing happens, but we want to like push everything away from our uh, people, right? So we're going to just take the near limit and start doing just that. And I'm going to go as far as something like that. A little bit of bleed is very important to get like really good results. And then the last thing I want to do is blur. Look at the edges around here. And it's like, I just want this to be like a very, very smooth transition. Okay. So this will help us get just that. And you're seeing like how it's feathering this like so naturally. Uh, because without it, it's just like really, really like there's a fine line, right? So like where we want to go with that. Somewhere around here is really, really nice. So now I'm just going to turn off the depth and we're seeing obviously what we're doing to the background. Um, obviously we did not want to go that extreme. So now we just like reset that. And here what I want to do with the way I like to work is just uh, using my lift gamma gain for here. And in my gain, I'm just going to be using this to see like where I want to go, what I want to do with it. So I'm going to use my panel, but you'll see what's happening in our gain tab, like right here. So I go, I want to drop my green to add magenta. So I just did that. I want to lift my reds. I want to take my blues and like pull it down to create this kind of thing, right? And I want to keep adding magenta in there and keep adding red in there, not too much. Keep pulling my yellow down to something like that. And then all I want to do is I just want to go in my highlights and I want to drop that. And I want to drop it by like a good quarter of a stop. So negative 25 to something like that. And now this is what we got, right? And if we're just thinking like we're going a bit too far, we can obviously like drag these back and do something like this. And if I do before and after, now, where you want to go with it is totally up to you. We can also take our gamma and start pulling it down to like give it like a really moody sort of effect. We can just like dial the red back, you know, and we can just add a little bit more magenta. 
We can keep the warmth if we want, or we can start dialing that back in as well. And now we have this sort of effect. And it's like very natural. And it's like coming through, as you can see, like, you know, very gradually coming in. Like, look at the amount of change we made in our waveform. How much of a change? And then we left the bottom as is. So let's go here. It's this type of natural layering that you need in DaVinci Resolve to create something very, very special. And if I just take these two, uh, you know, so this was our Rec. 709 balanced. And then that's what we created, and especially what we're doing here. And if we play it through, of course, it's going to hold. So like now you see this and like, you know, you look at this image and there is no artifacting happening. None of that. Like look at the edges right here and how clean everything is and what a beautiful separation that we created while having this, we have like these crazy blues coming in and it's just such a beautiful split. Uh, tone that's happening that in the most natural way possible. So if you take this, uh, we ended up with like something very, very, very special. I mean, you know, call it moonlight um, and, and it's there. It's just that impressive and that good. And uh, without this AI tool, we wouldn't have been able to finish off our look. And that's why it is so beneficial. Now let's move on to our final and a super killer AI feature in Resolve 20. I do want to take a second and just tell you, any of you who are interested in Cosverse or Rapid Grade, right now we're still rolling the early bird special. Um, I will be ending it very, very soon. So the idea behind Cosverse is how do we stay ahead of AI? So ChatGPT takes up to eight minutes to create a 25%-ish look. With Cosverse, you get those looks with a single click with our proprietary one-click look system. You want a teal and orange? Done. You want a clean white? Done. You want an old school retro look? Done. Whatever you need, every major look is available in there. And these are just a few benefits of what you get inside Cosverse. So if you want to learn more and if you want to take advantage of our early bird special, check out the link in the description. Let's get back to the video. All right, so here we are. And this shot is obviously underexposed and super green. So this is our conversion from log to Rec. 709. So the first thing that we want to do is balance the shot. So we balance it, we lift it up and we just clean up the green. And when we do that, like you'll see how much noise it brings in. So if I do before, I mean, you can even see the noise before and how gunky and ugly this is. And hopefully it's coming through even on YouTube. So this is before, you know, so like, look at all that gunk. And then after we did that, I mean, we cleaned up some of it, but still, you know, it's there. It's there and it's very prominent. Like look at in all of these areas. Okay, so that noise is pretty prominent. Uh, before you had to like know what to do when you go in your motion effects and uh, noise reduction controls and all that stuff. But now it's just way too easy. I really hope that they make it more visible in future updates because right now it's kind of buried under this right here mode and then all the way at the bottom you have ai ultra nr and you go there and still nothing happens you have to click on analyze and as soon as you analyze it will pick apart like i mean it usually does a pretty good job to find an area that has a lot of noise in a clean patch so it can just go ahead and analyze it and give you something really clean. So it already did the job. So if I go before and after, I mean, you're looking at what it did. I mean, wow, cleaned it up, and especially like right here before, after. I mean, it's almost like too clean, but that's OK. I would rather have an image that's too clean and then I get to add texture than an image that just has like ugly, gunky uh, noise in the um, in our shadows in our lower mids. So now it cleaned up all of that. And it was just that simple, the single click. I mean, you can modify it. You can do whatever you want with it. You can just grab this point and you can move it around if you want. And it'll do a real time update. So if I were to take it and put it here, it'll do a real time update. If I take it and put it right here, it'll do a real time update. Okay. So now that is already done. So then when I create my look, I'm using rapid grid to do it. Again, you guys can use whatever you want. And if I turn this on, look at, we brought in grain but we brought in real 35 millimeter grain that just looks so freaking good. I mean, look at that. First of all, I mean, look at this grade. So this is before, this is after. I mean, wow. It's just like, it's like a look from uh, 24 straight out of like, you know, their studio. Um, what was the movie with uh, Adam Sandler? I mean, it's like giving me that vibe, right? Like, I mean, uncut gems. So it has that thing going on and it's just done. 
And uh, if I come down and show you film grain, we have this applied because if I get rid of it, it's like this, pretty clean. Uh, turn it on, it just adds like that embedded grain into your footage. And just like that, we were able to clean up because ultimately the goal is to let AI do the heavy lifting. So with a single click, we were able to clean that up. So now it's a level playing field. It doesn't matter if you have 50 years of experience grading in DaVinci Resolve or if you have zero days of experience grading in Resolve. After you watch this video and after you find out this mode, it is pretty much getting you there. And now somebody's gonna argue with me and somebody's gonna say in the comments like, oh my God, but it's not the same, blah, blah, blah. I mean, shut the f It is the same because the content is not watched by other colorists most of the time. The content is watched by my wife, my brother, you know, your mom, your dad. And those guys don't understand the nuances about this. All they want is like a good, clean image. They don't want something looking gunky. So that's just as simple as that. So people overcomplicate the shit out of these things, but they just don't know what the f they're talking about. They, they're just salty because now an amateur can get these results and it took them like 18 years to hold that information and not share it with the world. And now it's out there. So sorry for you, but uh, I'm pretty happy. I'm happy that things are becoming accessible, things are getting easier, and people can do things like this, like all of this that we just did. I mean, this is all used to be absolutely monumental. And like I said, it used to go to visual effects department, thousands of dollars, maybe tens of thousands of dollars, weeks of back and forth, communication gap because it's sent somewhere else in a different country, and then deadlines are pushed. All of that chaos is gone. Like now Resolve is really giving us what we need uh, to become a one-man studio. There you have it. Three AI features that turn you into a dangerously good colorist inside Resolve 20. If you have any content suggestions, drop them down below. Do not forget to check out the links in the description if you want to join Cosverse with the early bird special. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, fam.